Just before we get into this video, let me just tell you now, I've got a big piece of news. West Ham Fan TV have officially joined O'Milly. O'Milly is more than just a platform. It's a space where football fans become part of the action, hosting your shows, jumping in as guests, or simply just connecting with others who share your passion. At O'Milly, football equals life. Football is more than just a game, but aren't you just tired of watching and typing from the sidelines? With O'Milly, it's time to get into the game. O'Milly brings fans together like never before. All you have to do to sign up is create your account, download your free AI avatar like this one, follow the people you want to follow and get engaging with your favourite content creators or become one yourself. Whether you want to host your own live debate, jump into someone else's as a guest or just listen, Amelia is the place where true football conversations happen. This isn't just another social platform, it's where real fans speak, share and shape the future of football together. This week on O'Milly, we'll be coming at you live after the Forest game for a post-match O'Milly show. So join us live on O'Milly from about 5pm. Come on, you irons. Uh, Nick Nilkins here, West Ham Fan TV, back again once again with another video. Now, it's West Ham Forest this weekend at the City Ground. Well, it's actually Forest West Ham at the City Ground. Um, I'll be going up there, so check me out all the way up there. Um, and I can only get one man on. I fucking hate talking to this geezer. He fucking winds me. He used to wind me right up. I wanted to fight him at one time. But um, we've become good friends over the course of a couple of years. Wolfie, my man. What's going on? How are you, man? Yeah, I, just, I was just remembering back, mate, the back and forth we used to have over Twitter with how much he's you know what? And... I don't know whether it's me, right? But I, I've got quite a few YouTubers, yeah, that I've really got off to bad starts with, and I'm fucking like, we are Tottenham TV. We're good pals now. We're talking about starting a new podcast together. I, I, want, to boys, yeah. I want to fucking strangle them too. And I'll be so honest with you. to do with the Spurs stuff or just yeah. them? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a little bit to do with the Spurs stuff, but it's just, you know, it's just the way I am. I'm a little bit of a cockney geezer. I'm a little bit of a cockney yeah. geezer. Oh, I'll tell you what, Wolfie, you'd, if you flick me, I'd go over today if we had a fight today, because I feel fucking rough. Honestly, I feel horrible, horrible. And it's not going to get any better for me. Um, listen, I'm I'm worried about this one. I watched the uh, Man United game. I wasn't too convinced of with the win, uh, but a win's a win, and we pushed us up at the table a little bit. But Forrest are in fine form. Um, talk, talk to us, Wolfie, what's going on? Mate, I don't really know, mate. It's like, you know what? At the start of the season, I predicted would finish eighth, and everyone, including the Forest fan base, were laughing at me. Yeah. Now people are telling me, you might have predicted a little too low. Still early days, and it? it's still early days. There's still plenty of forestness to happen. Do you know what I call it? To be honest with you, when I look Forest at the squads, hmm. when I look at the squads, Forest got a good side. And they've built yeah. a good, good side, a nice solid side. Um, I'm a big fan of Danilo, and you just uh, you just reminded me that he's been out for, mm. for, for you know for the, most of the season. I like him. Yeah. I love Murillo. I think Murillo is a is a brilliant centre half. I like Chris Wood, as I said on your channel. You know what I mean? There was times Even when though I was... he went to Millwall for a bit, mate. You I don't that. care. Yeah, you know what I mean? We used to, used to Billy Bonds went to Millwall. You know what I mean? We love him. <laughs> true, um, true. Lomas took him down. We still love him. Um, but yeah, so. Listen, you know, I, I like Chris Wood. I, I like the style of striker. People think he wasn't fancy enough for us. The fancy ones didn't quite work out. He's as honest as they come, and he's in good form. Um, but yeah, yeah. But when he came, mate, he was shite. Right? There, there's no two ways of like under oh, Cooper. Yeah. I know he, that. He, thing. Didn't, he didn't look like he knew what a football was, let alone where the goal was. And then Nuno came in, and I remember I was his biggest critic, by the way under Cooper. He was atrocious. But I remember when Nuno came in and you researched Nuno's philosophies and things, you look at the way he wants to play. And you could see, like, you know how he did with Jimenez at Wolves? Yeah, yeah. I could see those ideas. I thought he, this he was using the traits to, to his advantage. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Which is what Cooper didn't do. And then he's just been a machine ever since. I think only Haaland and uh, Cole Palmer have scored more goals than him since yeah. Nuno's come in. He's third top goal scorer in the league at the moment. And he's just oozing with confidence, mate. Honestly, we call him Cristiano Woudinho now, mate. Yeah, That's yeah, like he's, how he's, good he's I've, I've, Listen, I've, I think it's a very... But again, you know, it, we know that feeling. David Moyes came mm. in. Look at Haller, look at Skamaka. Two yeah. strikers that have, you know, they've, they've actually made a big impact on Europe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, well established strikers come to us, couldn't look hit a barn door of a banjo. We kept on reverting back to Mikel Antonio every time one of them fucking missed hey, an open hey. goal. But Careful, he's no, my no. boy. Well, listen, I love Mikel. And mm. look, no, no, nothing you can say about Mikel. We've had every we've had European strikers, we've had Bruce Dortmund strikers. Mick, they keep on putting Mikel back in. So Mikel must yeah. be doing something right. That's what I'm saying. Um listen, I'm a bit worried about Forrest. I, as I said before, I'm not that convinced. 
with what I saw um, at the London Stadium on Sunday. We got the win. I still don't think it was a penalty. If I'm honest, I'm going to be fucking honest as the day is long. I still don't think it was a penalty. I think Danny Ings jumped into it. It's one of them 50-50. May have been given, may have not. It was given. Um, I don't know whether you watched the breakdown, mate, but I've, I've played a load of clips of where we've been fucked over for the last five, six years on a spin. So I will take not that one. As us, mate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it takes a big club to get fucked over and then they start fucking... I mean, remember when... Uh, when Liverpool got that goal offside against Tottenham and they didn't stop, stop talking about it. Oh, mate, week. for a month. For a month yeah. it went on yeah. and on, didn't it? And then yes, obviously when little old Forrest decided to tweet out against the corruption, yeah, we got we got hit with three quarters of a million pound fine for that, mate. Worth it. Worth it. it. Exactly. It, it's, it's worth it because, I'm sorry, if, it, if we can't because... talk out against bad decisions, then what does that say it's... about where the refs are, where the PG LOL are, as I call them? The joke, mate. They're a monopoly. They're a monopoly, yeah. and they're a, and they're a dictatorship. And I said this before. Look, I ain't got three quarters of a million pounds. I'm not paying no three quarters of a million pound fine. Yeah, right. But I'm telling you now, it, you you see it. You know that every pundit in this country was up in arms, up in arms. That should never have been a penalty. Yes, it's cost him his job. Blah blah. blah. I, I picked up five clips, Wolfie. Five clips where we've got a bad decision that's cost us the game against him in ten years. Mm. And you've never seen them again. But Nikki, what you see, especially with that entitled fan base that's man you, they never talk to you about the ones that they've had year in, year oh, out. Yeah. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And suddenly, oh, they got look, I hate United, yeah. Even I'll agree it wasn't a pen, right? But it was funny. Yeah, I kind of laughed at it. I'm not gonna you. lie, right? But you know, they won't talk about do you remember when they scored when Spurs scored against them? All those years ago, oh, where well, it he went, Carol. It hit the back of the net and he pulled it back. Exactly. And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. No Mate, corruption. Yeah. I, I watched the game the other day. Pogba scored against a an equaliser when it was important. The ball yeah. curved out of David Moyes was looking at it go over his head. And the geezers, they looked at it on VAR and went, we, we don't know whether it went out of yeah, the play. Yeah, but they don't talk about those, mate. They don't no, talk they don't about talk those, about you know? Um, Felipe Anderson scored a goal. You'll see it on the, on the breakdown. Yes. It was about yeah. fucking five yards on side. No one ever yeah. mentioned that again. These are the yeah. same decisions. These are the same decisions that cost us games. Yeah. Do you remember the Van Persie one that they used on the highlights reel that won him the league that yeah. Rooney passed through to him? He was offside. They never I, talk I about that. that. Yeah. I remember, but, I remember know, going back. These real I, clubs I, like ours, bro, they just don't give a shit, do they? I remember going back, right? I, I, I think we won the game. I think we won the game. So it didn't cost us, right? But mm. I remember going back to Old Trafford. I think it was 2001. Right, something like that, yeah. And I remember Defoe scored, and I had a little TV. This was two back 2000, 2001. It was one of them yeah. little TV things. You remember the little TV things, right? Oh, and Paul, fucking my mate had like, a little fucking thing. He went, that weren't offside, right? He, he called him offside. Flag went up. Nothing was said about it, right? The right back was picking up the corner flag. Yeah, he was. He was on the pitch picking up the corner flag. I said, like, I'm oh, coming back from the corner flag. Yeah, and he scored. Geezer's there. He's flown up there. So say that's the edge of the pitch. He's there. The geezer's got his flag up there. The foe scores. And they, they, no one said a fucking dicky bird. It don't matter, mate. It don't matter. Mate, it don't, don't matter. matter. It's, it's the corruption, mate. You know, we saw yeah. it last year. Forrest Everton getting screwed over with PSR. Chelsea can buy and sell hotels to themselves. Yeah, it's fine. They find loopholes. So, you know, we're this, and this is what makes me happier about this season, mate. Like, with all this crap going on, we're just saying, screw them. We're doing it on the pitch. And we have what, been. What, 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 what do you... F let, let me ask this in a, in a good way, because obviously there's a good way and a bad way to look at it. Bad what do you way, think mate, of the Premier League since you've come back? Uh, honest opinion. It, in the way not the it. same. It's not the same as the one we left. Yeah. I, and I think Sky have corrupted it. They've made it too much about the money, too much about the off-field decisions. Look, mate, if you ask me two, three years ago, what is PSR? I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, what was what's the allowance of it in the year? How much money? What's um, amortization? All these things. Why is a football fan have we had to get into the ins and outs of that? Where all I care about is who's starting, what's the score going to be, how do I feel about the match? Just take it old school. Now, as much as I hated the championship, you never got this crap in the championship. Yeah, it was about what sure happened. Mean. You'd go after the game, complain about a decision here and there. You dust yourself off and you go on to the next game. It's football. It's, yeah, it's, it's football. This is not football. And I said this when Forrest got done for, for uh, FFP. I said it when fucking Everton got done twice. Yeah. 
I said it when they was going for after Southampton. Was it Southampton or Leicester? Leicester. Leicester. Leicester, Leicester yeah. and, and Leicester won their case. They're now going after Man City, yeah, and things like that. And I said, like, I want to watch football. Mm. I want what happens on the pitch, no matter what's going yeah. on. Like, uh, listen, unless you're fucking blatantly cheating, and listen, we've been caught cheating when we the Tevez thing and all that. We, you know, we we got done. We paid the fine, right? Um, but they left the football decisions were left down to the football decisions. They went, yeah. look, he shouldn't have been playing, but we're going to give him a hefty fine. But the football was played on the pitch, and that whatever happened on the pitch stays on the pitch, right? I still don't think he was dodgy fucking signing, but whatever. I'm, you know, I'm not. I wasn't even thinking. But what I'm seeing now, yeah, and, and I see this, right? Everton last year deducted 10 points. They're bottom of the league. They'd won, they'd won more games than, than us, I think, at the time. You know what I mean? Like, And I'm seeing, I'm looking at them and they've got no points or one point. I feel, I'm like, they're fighting. We're, we're fighting. We're, 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 we're winning football matches in the courtroom. And yeah. like, what is the point? So like, like, they've picked up, so say say they picked up 10 points at the time. They've got three games. They beat us away. They beat someone else away and they've won one at home, right? I think they had 10 points or 16 points at the time. They're sitting at the bottom of the league. And I think three, somebody's gone to three games here, spent a whole lot of money and it don't fucking matter because exactly. the court have decided that don't count because exactly. you spent more fucking money on your stadium or you spent a little bit more money than this. You spent a little bit more money than that. I said this about FFP straight away. You ever have a fucking flat? Like, it should not be based on the size of your club. Yeah? So, yeah. Forrest yeah. getting in trouble, Everton getting in trouble, right, would not compare to if Man United bought a player that was more than both of them. They'd, they'd be exactly. able to do it. How, exactly. how is this fair? This is monopoly. This is corruption. It is, mate. And on top of that, we've got an owner who's got the money, who wants to spend the money, and is being told not to. The whole point of this FFP crap was to stop, you know, the Portsmouths from happening again. It's not going to happen in this day and age. Listen, I It's understand. not fit for purpose. But if you've got the things like that, why not put a fund in place? Rather than keep on fucking holding all the money, why not put a fund in place? Mm. for Like, what's the point, right? You, you, you get this fucking club, yeah? You get this club. Let's say Arsenal, for instance, right? Yeah. When they signed Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, it was sick. They've paid him three hundred thousand pounds a week. They give him a pay rise, right? They made four yeah. people redundant, or four 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 hundred people redundant, or saying at the same week because of COVID, right? Then they give this geezer a three hundred thousand pound back pay rise. In the same fucking um, breath, we see a fucking football club go out of uh, out of out of business, business out of existence yeah. over hundred years over the fucking one person's wages. It was he could yeah. have paid that in yeah. two days for them exactly. Exactly. It was it's the pyramid, like, isn't it? It's not right, man. It's not right. Yeah. It's not right. And it makes it less competitive, mate. That's why, you know what? I've got no beef with Villa. I love what Villa are doing. They're shaking yeah, it up yeah, a little. Yeah. Newcastle as well. I say, let them spend. Let's see. Let's see how annoyed they can get the cartel six. And I said this. I said this when they come in. They stopped them. Them yeah. six stopped Newcastle from getting taken yep. over, right? Two days then later. they took over. Yep. They started spending a bit of money. They started attracting a few players. What have they done? Now they have to sell. Yeah. They're the richest people in the world. It doesn't make sense. Mate, how can we call this the best and the most competitive league in None. the world when we're not competing? We're not competing. Oh, there's no you know? there's no competition. That's what I'm saying. That's why we yeah. see the likes of Man United. When they get fucked over every week, we talk about it for six weeks because it is not good for the brand. Exactly. But there we go. Right, let's exactly. talk about the game on Saturday. What's going to happen? Tell me, tell me. Well, mate, Nuno's sorted our defence out. Our defence is brick wall like right now. Second oh, lowest goals off. conceded. Um, I think our XG against is the lowest in the league. And it's because he's brought... You know you know how much I rave about Murillo, and I know you like Murillo as well. I can, yeah, but I can feel it. Milenkovic, mate. Milenkovic is almost outshining Murillo. He's that really? good. He's that good, mate. And do you know what I like about him is you just don't notice him because with Murillo, you notice the flamboyancy, the runs, the slide tackles and all this. With Milenkovic, he's got that football IQ. He's in the right position, never sliding in, headers everything away that comes into the box. And he's helping Murillo develop. And this partnership is unreal, mate. Call him yeah. M&M, mate. They're that good. So yeah, we've built this base, this foundation, right? We've got those two, uh, Moreno on loan from Villa. Uh, left back and Ola Aina, who's been fantastic as well. He's at right back, and then it's the pace on the counter attack. So we ain't a low block team. We're more a mid block team with 
pacey transitions, quick on the transitions, getting Callum Hudson and Doi, be it Alanga or Jota, Silva on the right, and then the big man up front bagging the goals in. And it's working, mate. It's simple. Balanced. You know what he's done? He's made football simple. That's yeah. what he's done. Football's a simple game made fucking exactly. by idiots. That's what they used to say. Exactly. Idiots. Um, yeah, he's it, got the balance right. You're going to be glad to hear that I don't think we've quite got the balance right. Mm. Got holes all over the pitch, man. You said about your defense is brick like wall. If Wes was a brick like wall, it'd be Mr. Blobby's brick wall because it'd be fucking flopping everywhere, man. Because if you're coming down, it'd be like Mr. Blobby walk through it. We've got the second most goals conceded in the league this season, although we are a little bit defensively better up than under David Moyes, but mm. not much. Um, Raz record says, um, there's holes in the middle of the pitch. Um, he just doesn't seem to be able to get the balance right. But Wolfie, something's got to change at some point. That's my worry. I'm not going to lie to you, Nikki. That's my worry. And this was a bit of what we had last season at the City Ground. We were having similar conversations to it. I know you were yeah. up to your, your tether with Moyes. But you were saying to me, we ain't going to win, mate. And I, and I thought I thought we should win, but I was you always said, worried we'd do a You backed us to win last year, didn't you? I, think I was just worried, mate. I, I just could feel it because we needed, I think we were one or two games away from being safe around that time. Yeah, crappy yeah. loot and remember plucky old loot and by the way they're in the relegation zone in the championship what happened to them I love it yeah. um and you know we needed that win and i gotta say you were right because you were shocking last season at the city ground like yeah, i could see right. why you wanted Moyes out he had to go like yeah. i hear it from a lot of um, west ham fans now saying oh careful what you wish for i've seen that oh where would we be under Moyes and what have you and the evidence i saw last season especially when you played at the city ground even not, it, whatever people think of him, there's always a limit to how far a manager can take a club. Of and it was of clear as day his time was done there. So, you know, you got Lopetegui now. I just don't think... I'm glad we're meeting you slightly earlier in the season than maybe towards the Christmas period where I think he will settle you guys down. What surprised me about him is when he came into Wolves, he got them playing quite quickly. They were bottom of the league when he came in and he moved yeah. them up the table quite quickly. So I was kind of expecting him to do that with you. Ironically, he was linked to us as well when so, Cooper went. The weird thing is, and I think this is the reason, is that he went into Wolves, he had what he had, right? Yeah. In fact, that's why he left, because he didn't have any more money to spend, yeah? yeah? yeah. He, he came to more. us and he's basically done a whole rejig. Mm. You know, them, them pieces need to gel. You know, he needs yeah, to I agree. find it. But the problem is with him, you know, and I said to him, look, he's going to have a little bit of grace. I think it'd be 10 games. This is his 10th game. I'm still not convinced. If it starts going wrong from here, he's going to feel the pressure. Yeah, and rightly so. Look, at the end of the day, just because if Moyes was not the answer, it does not necessitate that Lopetegui has to be no, the you're answer. Right, yeah, you're right. Do you know what I mean? You're right. Like, what's the average lifespan of a manager in the Premier League these days? Two years tops? You know, apart five from weeks, isn't it, nowadays? Italy. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, you can change a manager anytime you want can't change the players and he can't complain because I think you had a good summer. I know Lawless is going crazy saying top four and what have you, but you know, it takes time to gel these players. I think you've yeah. brought in some good players. I, I just don't get why he's not using Somerville as much as he should be, mate. It's that's I, the one I that think, surprised me. And listen, I, think I think he'll the game, play on Saturday. The game on the weekend. I think that's him starting now. I mm. think we could be have a, a, a little, uh, nice little, um, a starting lineup going on, we might start to see some balance. It's the midfield that worries me. It's the midfield, like there's parts of it. How's that of... been? I quite rate him. Right, it's it's fantastic, but yeah. it's it's not it's not you know. Rodriguez is 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 he's getting better slowly, but mm. it, it's you know it's a hard league to come into, especially at that age as well. He's in his thirties. Yeah. Um, we got him on a free to come into the league and start like picking it up and out. Look, when you're twenty five, it's different. When you're 31, yeah. you know, it is a little bit harder. Suchek, Suchek is like Marmite. You know, one, some people love him, some people hate him. Um, one week he has a fucking game like Prime Zidane and the next week he'll fucking look like that. One of them, you know, one of them fucking things outside the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. That's what he looks like. Yeah. Um, but you think the Quetzal gets dropped, mate, or do you think he stays? Do you know what? I think he's got to. Do you know what? I don't think he does this week. Yeah. I don't think he does this week. Kudos but suspended. when yeah. Kudus comes back, who mm. just pays in a 10. Yeah, and that me, makes sense. I, I, I see an interview of him when he first joined us. He's played on a wing since he joined us. And I said to him, what's your position? He goes, I'm a 10. I've always played as a 10. That's where mm. I like playing. That's my favourite position. Um, sometimes I played striker for Ajax. Sometimes I played on a wing um, for West Ham. But I'm a 10. 
you did well to keep him. You know, I thought he would go in the summer. I don't think it'd be uh, after this summer. He said that last summer as well, mate. I don't know. No, it, it depends, depends what you do in it. It depends what you do. Yeah, I mean, Pakatar should have gone two years on a spin, but it's the betting thing that's kept him here. Yeah, um, and he would have gone. You know, he would have gone two years ago to City. He was going to last year to City. Yeah. If that wasn't, if that wasn't um, holding over him, this this year an eighty-five million pound clause coming for Kudos as well. Listen, he's he's going to go and play for a Liverpool or an Arsenal or someone. I know it. I know. I know what mm. it is. Mm. Yeah, sometimes you have to confine yourself. You know what I mean? We had the same thing with Declan Rice. People, oh, hey, Declan Rice. Like, Listen, they do your stint for the club. If you can't, if you ain't got the ambition to keep them, why can the fuck can you keep them? It's not even that, mate. That takes us back to the whole FFP PSR stuff, don't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's, That's what I'm what saying. You can't is. even afford to keep exactly. them. We're worried about losing Murillo this summer, or last summer and this summer. Same with Morgan Gibbs White. So, you know, you can only focus on what we got now, mate. And I am, I am confident, but not enough to start taking the piss out of you. Puff my chest out just yet. I'll save it for full time, mate. But. We should win this. We should on paper. We should, but this is Forest. But Nuno's eroded that out of me slowly but surely. I was thinking that before the Leicester game, before the Palace game, and we won both of them. And I'm like, is this? Is this? Are we going back to the Frank Clark days here, where we actually were just winning games, finished third? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting game. I said we're going to lose. I think we're going to lose three 0 you were right last time, so I take. I can just, I'll just see this now, happening. Right? It's, it's typical West Ham. I think we we go to the city ground. As I say, first game out of London. We're not in great form. Um, we're conceding lots of goals. I think if you get going early, I, I think it could be a cricket score. But I want to be wrong, Wolfie. I want to be wrong. So I'm going to say head three nil to Forest. Three, okay. But a little one nil, a little one or two one. I don't, I don't think we keep a clean sheet. That's what I'm going to say. Heart, but my. My brain say we're going to lose 3 0. Oh, my head would agree with you. I, I had a little feeling on a 3 0. We weren't scoring many goals, but we started clicking nicely against Leicester. But they are utter shite. My heart says it's got a special place for you guys because you were our first win coming back to the Premier League. You know, yeah. I used to live down in New Cross. I, I used to have all the Millwall fans who so I couldn't stand all around me. So I was always back in West Ham in them days. You know, to any time you played those, give us one of up. Oh, oh. I ain't going that far, mate. I ain't going that far. I still got, you know, my emblem on my chest. But those Millwall fans and you cross this do my head in, man. But yeah, I so West Ham, I got no beef with you guys. I think you're a proper team. And I want the likes of you, us, Villa, um, Newcastle. Let's shake this up a little, mate. But yeah, let you shake yeah. up from next weekend. Get your points on the board and we can go back to hating each other again. Listen, I think I think all four <laughs> of the clubs you got there, right? I think they've got the fucking tools in Potential. the locker. Yep. To do something, especially when the likes of Man United are on the fucking on the ring. Exactly. Listen, Newcastle ain't doing that well. But you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a couple of teams there that are wobbling. Yeah. There's a couple of teams that are wobbling. So there's a, there's room for the so like, Villa done it last year. Forest are impressing. You know what I mean? Like, I like to see clubs, and I mean this with the bottom of my heart, and I'm enjoying seeing Villa in the Champions League. I've, I'm enjoying seeing what they've yeah. done because they yeah. come from below us, relegation trouble. Now they're beating Bayern Munich in the Champions League. They went to the Europa, like uh, the, the Conference League, this 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 cup, semi-final last year. They're having a fucking time in their lives. One change and one manager. That's all it was. Exactly. One change and one manager. Within six months, it's a completely different club. And I like Villa doing it the way they are because the clubs like that are doing it properly. Exactly, mate. That's why I hate people talking about this stupid Brighton model. I say, what about the Villa model? Get a yeah. decent manager in. It great, doesn't matter great. what yeah, South American fantastic. gems you find. Do the Villa model. The what did they, do? Them... they went and lost a couple of big players. They went straight yeah. out and found fucking replacements for them. Exactly. Exactly. There we go. All right, yeah. Wolfie, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to leave the description for your channel down in the link below. We've done a, uh, a video on Forest Fan TV, so go and check that out. Um, it's been lovely chatting to you, mate. We, do, we, we, as as always, we, mate. As we didn't get off to the best of starts when we when we uh, met each other on YouTube. But that's it's football, a pleasure. mate. That's football, isn't it? That's life. That's <laughs> yeah, all. You go get yourself a hot water bottle, mate. mate do you know what? I'm starting. You're starting to turn into. Do you know what? I'm so tired. You know them cartoon wolves? That's what your head's starting to turn into. Oh, like I just me. thought you going to say I started to look more attractive or something. Yeah. It's, no, I'm it's, a, it's I'm not that really stage yet, man. I've got this um, really bad fucking ear infection there. It's, it's making me... I'm all feverish and all sorts. So, listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you, mate. As um, always, bro. 
you want to join us? We're, we're, we're going to be on Emily. Um, we're going to be doing post uh, 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 Forest game. I'm going to be doing it in the car. If you want to join us, mate, on Emily, you're quite welcome. Um, it's after Let's the Forest game. Sorted, mate. Let's get it. Yeah, sorted. yeah. We'll see. We'll see what we can do there. Um, but we'll be back on Emily, as it said at the beginning of this video. But thank you very much. One thing left for me to say. <laughs>